In this video, I'll give some definitions and notation for sequences. A sequence is a list of numbers in a particular order. The sequence 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 9, and so on is a sequence that gives the digits of pi. A sequence is sometimes described abstractly with letters in place of numbers, a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and so on, or more concisely, by writing a sub n with these curly brackets, here we're told that the index n ranges from 1 all the way up towards infinity. Sometimes the sequence is written just a sub n with curly brackets. Here it's implied that n ranges through all positive integers. For these sequences, given by formulas, let's write out the first few terms. We start with n equals 1, and we get a sub 1 is 3 times 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 2 factorial. That is, 4 over 3 factorial. Recall that 3 factorial means that we start with 3 and then multiply with consecutive numbers all the way down to 1. This simplifies to 4 sixths or 2 thirds. To find the next term, a sub 2, we plug in 2 for n. That's 7 over 4 factorial, which is 7 24ths. Similarly, a sub 3 is 10 over 5 factorial, which is 10 over 120, or 1 12th. So the first three terms of the sequence are 2 thirds, 7 24ths, and 1 12th. For the second example, we're asked to start with k equals 2. So I'll call the first term a sub 2 and just plug in 2 for k, which is 5 ninths, since negative 1 squared is positive 1. Plugging in k equals 3, we get negative 6 27ths, or 2, negative 2 ninths. For a sub 4, we again get a positive number, since negative 1 to the 4th is positive, and in fact, as we keep writing down terms, they're going to alternate between negative numbers and positive numbers because of the negative 1 to the k in the definition. Sometimes, the nth term of a sequence is defined indirectly in terms of previous terms. This is called a recursive formula. To write out the first few terms of this recursive sequence, we're told that a sub 1 equals 2. To find a sub 2, we just use the recursive formula 4 minus 1 over a sub 1. Since a sub 1 is 2, that's 4 minus a half, or 7 halves. To find a sub 3, we just apply the recursive formula again, 4 minus 1 over 7 halves simplifies to 26 sevenths. Sometimes it's possible to describe a sequence with either a recursive formula or a closed form non-recursive formula. For example, if I look at the sequence 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, I can describe that recursively by saying a sub 1 is 2, and each a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 plus 2. Or I can describe it as a closed form expression by saying this sequence is of the form 2 times n, where n starts at 1. Now let's practice writing out a formula for the general term a sub n of a sequence. For this first sequence, notice that each term is 3 more than the previous term. So this is like a linear function with slope 3. Each time that n goes up by 1, our a sub n's go up by 3. And so I can write a sub n is 3 times n plus b, where b functions like my y-intercept in a linear equation. To find b, I can plug in 7 for a sub 1, that corresponds to an n value of 1, and I get that b has to equal 4. So my general formula is 3 times n plus 4, 
where n starts at 1. I can check this by plugging in a few values of n, like we did in the previous example, just to make sure it works. Notice that it would also be possible to write this as 3 times n plus 7 if we're willing to start with n equals 0 instead of 1. If we let n start with 0, then our first term functions like our y-intercept. This is an example of an arithmetic sequence, a sequence for which consecutive terms have the same common difference. And in general, if a is the first term and d is the common difference, then an arithmetic sequence has the form d times k plus a if our index is k and starts at 0, like it did over here, or if we'd rather start with an index of 1, we can rewrite that as d times n minus 1 plus a. Notice these two expressions are exactly the same if we just set k equal to n minus 1. In particular, the starting value of n equals 1 here, if I plug in 1 for n, I get the equivalent starting value of k to be 0. Let's write some more formulas for sequences. In this first sequence, notice that consecutive terms always have the same ratio of 1 tenth. In other words, each time n increases by 1, a sub n gets multiplied by 1 tenth. This is the same property that exponential functions have. And in fact, we can write a sub n in the form of an exponential function with base 1 tenth, but we need to multiply by the right initial value so that when n is 1, we'll get a first term of 3. That correct initial value is 30. As usual, we can check our answer by plugging in a few values of n, n equals 1, 2, 3, and making sure we get back the terms in our sequence. If we prefer to start with our index at 0, we can rewrite this as 3 times 1 tenth to the nth power. Since a value of 0 for n in this formula gives us 3, just like a value of 1 for n in this formula gives us 3. In the second example, we again have a common ratio. If I divide the second term by the first term, I get a ratio of 5 halves, and that's the same ratio as I get when I divide the third term by the second term. So if I use an index starting with 0, I can write this series as 15 halves, which is the first term, times 5 halves to the n power. If I prefer to start with my index at 1, one way to do this is to let k equal n plus 1. And making a variable substitution, when n is 0, k will be 1. And since k is n plus 1, n is k minus 1. So I can replace n with k minus 1. This gives the following representation of the sequence. The third example has a common ratio of negative 2 thirds. So we can write it as the initial term of 3 times that ratio, negative 2 thirds, raised to the nth power, where n starts at 0. Or, as above, we can write it as 3 times negative 2 thirds to the k minus 1, where k starts at 1. Sometimes people like to write the negative 1 separately. The negative 1 to the power makes the series alternate between negatives and positive terms. These three sequences are all examples of geometric sequences, which are key sequences where consecutive terms have the same common ratio. And in general, if A is the first term and R is the common ratio, then a geometric sequence can be written in the form of A times R to the N, where N starts at 0, or as A times R to the N minus 1, where N starts at 1. These next two sequences are neither arithmetic sequences nor geometric sequences, since their terms neither have common differences nor common ratios. 
but I can still figure out a formula for the nth term just by looking for the pattern. In this example, since the terms are alternating, if I start at n equals 1, I know that I need a negative 1 to the nth power to make it start with a negative and then alternate positive negative again. The numerator looks like it's just twice n, and the denominator looks like it's always a perfect square, starting with the square of 3, so I'll write that as n plus 2 squared. The next sequence doesn't have a simple closed form formula, but I can describe it recursively by saying that a1 is negative 6, a2 is 5, and in general a n is equal to the sum of the two previous terms, a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2. This sequence is closely related to the standard Fibonacci sequence, which has the same recursive formula but different initial values. This video gave an introduction to sequences, including arithmetic sequences, geometric sequences, and recursively defined sequences.